All right. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. Uh, all hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. We got you, Peter. I'm, I know I'm having some uh, hiccups on my end of things, so uh, hopefully uh, my voice and everything will come through nice and nice and clear here. Um, I am going to kind of, uh, let me see, blow up my uh, uh, slides here so you can see the whole thing. area of, of expertise is really around um, geography questions specific to trees. Um, I'll go into a little bit about who I am in a moment, but I just wanted to give you some ideas about the type of questions that I ask. In particular, things like where are trees located? Um, what type of trees are growing in a specific location? Um, what is the size of the trees in, around in, in, in the area? And, uh, and in particular, you know, I have questions around um, things like the carbon cycle, like how much photosynthesis is going on, and then how much of that as the leaves uh, change uh, and fall off the off trees or as a, a tree um, actually uh, falls over and, uh, and, and composes all part of the carbon cycle. So as Brian mentioned, um, you know, for the next three years, we want you to be part of our observation team and really helping us to measure tree height, but also importantly, um, the land cover in your area. So how many, how much, how many trees are actually there? Uh, and we, we can watch that uh, change over time. Also, of your area or the green down, um, when, when are the trees or when are the, when are the leaves on trees uh, coming out or when are they falling off? Like here in Oregon right now, we're having a green down event where all of our uh, deciduous trees, they're starting to lose their leaves at this time and, and are starting to be part of that carbon cycle where they are now uh, starting to decompose and, uh, and turn into other, um, other materials. So these are a couple of the, of the pieces that, although uh, I'm going to talk about observing these things from space, these are, these are the pieces that you can actually help us with on the ground. You can do even go inside. Um, and it's also one of the first steps for going out and recording your tree height. Um, and, and that's looking at, at the aerial photos or the, the, land, the satellite images that are recording uh, photosynthesis across the planet what is in a certain location. So that's what this is the type of research that I do. I spend a lot of time uh, using a tool like Google Earth, uh, as well as many of the other data sets that NASA provides, um, including things like ISAT. Uh, to, to map, measure, and monitor the Earth. So a little bit of me. So I am an instructor of geography and geospatial sciences in the College of Earth, Ocean, Atmospheric Sciences at Oregon State University in the United States. You can see I'm located almost uh, halfway between the, the equator and the North Pole at 44.5 degrees north. So these, the, this latitude longitude is a really important way that um, I can work with you. Locate trees around the, around the world and put them onto a map or onto the globe. So that's a, that's a really important um, a piece of, of skills that that if you can learn how to locate things, we can allusion to, to that. Importantly, I'm also the science lead for the land cover protocol in the Globe Observer mobile app. So that is a nice tool that allows us to take pictures of, of the earth and, and classify them. Oregon, where I'm located, uh, we have a, uh, types of forests, and uh, most of the state is 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 covered in in different types of forests and types of trees. 
And so what I'm hoping is that is that over the next couple of years, you guys might be able to make a map similar to something like this, letting us know the trees you have around you. In Oregon, a needle leaf type of, of trees, a conifer type of, 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 of trees that keep their needles all year, year round. Um, but we also have a lot of what we call deciduous trees, trees that have broad leaves to them and that, um, that, that the leaves fall off at different times of the year, uh, usually in relation to temperature or, um, or water availability. So these are, these are two typical ways that we talk about the different types of trees that are out there. And you can see uh, that, that we have a wide variety here in Oregon. So this will be an interesting thing that we can start comparing between different schools and different regions is the different types of forests that are out there. all about just first locating where the heck are these trees uh, around the world um, where do we find them and are there any any similarities between the locations where we find trees versus areas where we don't find any trees I'd like to uh, try a little video here um, of, of, uh, of trees so bear with me while I uh, try to All right. I don't have them embedded like Brian does. The second largest country in Africa, DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, so in 2003. Perhaps the only good thing to come of the civil wars are the country's vast, untouched forests for business. But what is returning to the DRC? And how can local communities take ownership of this, their home, and secure a better future? DRC has not had any formal system of land tenure. I've been working with the African Wildlife Foundation, and we've been working with them to lend our spatial data, expertise, um, remote sensing capabilities, analysis of satellite imagery, to help them with their on-the-ground zoning activities, which they're formalizing with the government of the Democratic Republic of the Congo for land rights and for land use planning with local communities. Spatial data expertise, remote sensing capabilities, what do these words mean exactly? For over 10 years, this satellite has been orbiting the Earth. It's called Landsat 7. It collects information about the Earth's surface, which people like Janet can then interpret. So we can feed information derived from Landsat imagery into a variety of models planning in this landscape. And one thing, one way we've been using it is to identify the areas of highest conservation priority. So we've been working in the Moringa Lapore Wamba landscape, which I sometimes call MLW. Um, it's in northern DRC, it's the size of South Carolina, um, and it's full of tropical moist forest. So using Landsat imagery, we were able to zoom in on this particular forested area, connecting two protected areas in the east central part of MLW landscape. And it's an important corridor for the migration of bonobos between the protected areas, as well as other terrestrial species. Once the AWF identified this critical area for conservation, it began working with the government and local communities on mapping the region. The mapping process has a dual benefit of preserving biodiversity and helping local villagers to secure their own land use rights. Bana, tango, mususu, bayibi, esika, 
lopango e bandi pe lopango e soukite. Me lukula, si ka wa grasi na zonaj, tango babimisi, par exemple, karte ya lopango ouyo, mwana akuzala na facilite mounene po na koyeba e si ka lopango e bandi pe lopango e pe e kuzala e pa na ye doko soki batu ba ye akula kisabango fasilemo so puro toke alo ba keto zala kandi boye lo pango na biso ibanda kandi boye lo kula karte zali e zali dokimon mounen oyo e kede ata na generasyo ya piti during the DRC war it was their refuge and still now the forest provides them with food, air and shelter with the help of Landsat imagery, this vital resource can be managed and preserved for the benefit of wildlife and generations to come. Okay, so I want to give us a little bit of, a, of, of, an, of an idea why we might actually want to do that. And pause this. So we don't go on to the next video. And I'd like to um, highlight is this that uh, allows us all to work together to make some of these maps that are really important for us to, uh, to keep track of where trees are located um, and where they're not. Um, as well important um, piece of knowledge and information that help us uh, make better decisions. So where, what I am going to show you for the next couple of minutes or so is uh, hopefully, so my, my internet is, uh, is, is noting that I do have some stability issues. So hopefully it will clear up here. Um, what I'd like to show is uh, this Collect Earth online tool. And what this allows us to do is actually um, start labeling places on Earth, whether there's trees or not. And you can go there on your own, um, as well as, as, as during this, if you have the bandwidth. Um, but if you go to this uh, Collect Earth, uh, collect.earth website, you'll see that there is a variety of, of organizations that are using this. The GLOBE program uh, is here towards the top. And this is where we will be having additional locations that we can use for, through the next three years. So you can see I started one uh, this summer for the GLOBE learning expedition. So we're going to and um, we're going to just start looking at one of these locations. And so you can select this project and what you see now is locations where we actually uh, can start labeling whether there's trees or not. So I'm just going to click the go to the first one. And you'll notice I am not logged in or registered for this. So you don't have to register for this to make use of it. Uh, but you can see I can I need to zoom out a little and and notice that I am looking at a satellite image and I can zoom out and one thing I'll note is that I appear to be looking at a forest and the reason why I say that is because of these these lines that I see inside of here and so, so I can actually use my tool inside of here. I can select all of these trees or these points and label them as a tree. What this allows me to do is then count up the number of points here to identify how many trees I might have in this 100 meter by 100 meter area. So I can just click save and it will save that information. And 
then move me to the next plot and the next location. And what I am doing is much of what you have done inside of Google Earth. And so I can zoom out and I'm looking for features that look like trees. Uh, so we can see these black marks here um, might be trees, um, uh, but they may not be. Uh, and, and so this is where we need the on the ground information from people like you to help tell us whether or not we're seeing trees or not. In this case, none of my circles really fall on what look like and I'm going to just highlight my points and I'm going to label these as not trees and save that and move on to the next location. So this is, this is the type of science that I spend all my time doing is, uh, is going through and looking at satellite images like this and trying to see where am I located on Earth so here's an example where I, one of my, my locations ended up out in the ocean where there are clearly no trees. So again, that makes this one really easy, right? Because I didn't find any trees. And, and save that. So, this is essentially what I do as a scientist and, and go through and look at as many points as I can and try to label them. And so one thing projects is how many and where we could use your help. Uh, you know, please go onto this website and um, and start going through some of those locations and labeling whether there's trees there or there aren't any 